I'm Chef Tish Tantel and welcome to another edition of Urban Esque Living. Today I'm going to be talking about a very special kitchen food item. It's been around for thousands and thousands of years and mankind has used it in cooking as well as in medicine. It can be found in the produce section, in the tea aisle, and the baking row in your local store. What am I talking about? You'll find out when we come back. Welcome back to Urban S. Living. And that root that I was talking about that mankind has been using for thousands of years to cure ailments and to make your cakes taste delicious is none other than this delicious ginger root. And ginger root has been in our diets now for thousands of years. It's great for your digestion, it's great in tea, it's great in your gingerbread. Today I'm going to show you how to use the natural ginger root because the flavor is fantastic. And if you have the opportunity to use this in your cooking, you probably want to use this over the kind that's dried or the kind that's already cut up in a container. Now how do you cut open this ginger root? It's not as difficult as it looks. It has a thin skin on it and a lot of times you want to get rid of that skin because Sometimes growers put a property on this ginger in order for it not to sprout. Um, it has a retardant on it. Now unless you know that it's an organic piece of ginger, you should really cut that skin off because you don't want any chemicals getting into your body. Now in order to peel ginger, you can do it in a number of ways. You can use a small knife to do that and you can just pretty much peel it like uh, you would an apple. Or you can use one of these. This is a standard potato peeler. And basically, you're just peeling the skin off of the ginger. And you really don't have to go that deeply into it. You're just getting the skin off. And once it's complete, your ginger is ready to go. Our ginger is all clear of its skin, so the next step is to cut our ginger. And I'm going to show you how to cut the ginger for different uses. First, I'm going to clean off my surface. All right, now the surface of our ginger is skin free, and when you fill it, you find that it's got kind of a damp surface to it. Now, this is actually telling you that this is a juicy piece of ginger, which will make a, a very delicious product that you're cooking such as your bread or put it in your smoothie. Now the thing about ginger is that it is strong to the taste and the thicker you cut it the stronger it is. So if you're going to be using ginger in say gingerbread cookies or your oatmeal you're probably going to want this ginger diced. Now there is a such thing as candy ginger which you can use as a snack. And candy ginger is cut a bit thicker because you're going to actually cook it and sugarcoat it, which takes away some of that sting from the ginger. I'm going to be using my ginger in some baked items, so I'm going to need my ginger diced finely. We don't want people biting into a cookie or a piece of bread and get a big stinging piece of ginger because that's not pleasant to everyone. Some people do like that. I don't mind a nice juicy piece of ginger, clears out your sinuses, <laughs> but everyone doesn't want that surprise when they're eating your food. So I'm going to show you how to dice up this piece of ginger. Now when you're cutting up ginger, you can also use a food processor if you have one. And a food processor is very quick and easy, but you do have to do that cleanup. This way, once you're done cutting it, you're done. So what I did was cut off and made a flat surface on the ginger. So I'm just going to put the flat side down now. 
And I'm just going to cut thin slices. And like I said, this ginger we're not making into candy. So you're really not trying to get perfect slices. We're just trying to get it cut so that we can start dicing the ginger. Okay, now that our ginger is in slices, I'm just going to dice it. And I just want a rough cut. I don't need it cut into perfect little squares or perfect little cubes. I just need it cut into small enough bits so that it adds a nice little flavor enhancement to my bread, but I don't want it to totally overpower someone's taste bud. Now before I do get started with the cutting, I want to make sure that my cutting board does not keep moving around on my smooth stainless steel surface. So basically what this is is a just a regular piece of plastic. Um, it's actually like a, a, a drawer liner that was left over and I just used it. You can actually use a, a towel that you wet and you just wet it, you put it underneath your cutting surface and that keeps it from rolling around. And that's another kitchen safety tip. Make sure that your cutting board does not move around because if it does, you will get cut and we don't want blood in the food. We also don't want you to get cut. So make sure that you're safe. So what we're going to do now, like I said, is we're going to just dice up our ginger. And back and forth, using a back and forth motion with our knife. And this is our chef's knife and it's sharp. I do have a sharpener. I did give you a uh, lesson on sharpening your knives one of the episodes. So basically this is our knife that we have sharpened. how much ginger root you're trying to cut this could take a few minutes it could be quicker I'm going to make enough of this to use for a number of different recipes because the cutting board is out I have the ginger and it stores very well in your refrigerator I wouldn't store it on the kitchen shelf because at room temperature the storage shelf life is not as long as if you kept it in the refrigerator ginger is in a fine dice and being fine means that it's very small pieces of ginger which is going to make this perfect in my bread and in my granola because I don't want big chunks of ginger surprising people when they take a bite of it. Sometimes you do want bigger pieces of ginger but not today. This has been Tish Tansel and thank you for joining me on another Urban S Living.